Hello, today we're going to be uh, degreeing a camshaft in for a V-Twin Kohler Command, and this is going to be a uh, roller camshaft. Um, we get our camshafts from uh, Greg Hackman at Small Engines in Seymour. If you want to get a hold of him, he can grind you roller cams, flat cams. He's a really good cam grinder, great guy to deal with. Uh, his phone number is 812-522-4777, and uh, you can reach him uh, Monday through Friday. Okay, we're going to get this camshaft degreed. First thing to do to degree a camshaft, we're going to make some clearance issues to make the cam go around in the, in the, in the engine and make sure uh, the lifter follows the cam properly. And uh, we'll go to that and I'll show you what you got to do first. Okay, the first thing you got to do is uh, with a small base circle cam, the lifter's got to be able to follow that camshaft all the way around it. And what happens on a V-twin Kohler, the rear bearing, even on flat tap of cans with a smaller base circle, the lifter will hit here before it hits the cam. I'll show you in there, see what that lifter's hitting right there? Now we'll put the camshaft in there, and I'll show you how that, if you look down through the side there, you can see that cam is not even hitting the, uh, the lifter is not even hitting the camshaft. See there's a little gap there? And you can see that as you spin around there, it, it's, it's off of it. So we're gonna, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take and relieve this area of the block right here, so that lifter will ride down on the camshaft like it should. So that's what we'll do next. All right. Okay, we got that block clearance. We took a die grinder and, and relieved the block right here. And then you can check, check to see if you got it far enough just by putting the camshaft back in the engine, just temporarily like that. Put it back in the hole. Slide the lifter down there. Using pressure on the lifter, pull the cam out. You should see the li lifter actually drop down after you pull the cam out. And see the lifter drop down so you know it's going to be riding on it. Do one much more if you missed it there. See it drop down? So you know the lifter's riding on the cam now. It's going to follow it all the way around. And you can kind of see by two that that roller is past the bearing area of the lifter of the cam and it'll, it'll be okay then. Okay, we got the uh, block clearance so the camshaft will work properly in there. It'll go around in a circle and the lifter will work good. First thing you got to do, get the block on the engine stand, put the crankshaft in, come around here and put the degree wheel on here. And put, get, we just put a wire off the top of the block point, for a pointer. And the first thing you got to do then is uh, you got to put a piston and find top dead center. And here's the piston we're going to use. It's a JE piston. It uses one of our connecting rods. And uh, on some valves, on some engines, you're going to have to, uh, on, on certain camshaft grinds, you're going to have to clearance the uh, piston and put valve release there because otherwise the valves will interfere with the piston when they open on the overlap. So it'll look something like that when you're done with it, probably, for the intake valve there. And there's the exhaust valve. And... Uh, and you have to check that just by uh, the degree opening of how far the cam's open and checking your clearance from the top to, from the valve down to the head and see where it's at. Okay, first off we're going to put this piston in here. We're going to slide it right in here. We'll put some, we're going to find top dead center. That's done by putting a dial indicator on top of the piston. We'll get this thing on here first. We'll use a, we'll use a one inch dial indicator. Put this on on top of the piston, right in the center of the piston is, is preferable, that way it won't rock. And uh, you know it's accurate reading. Tighten it down there. We'll zero this thing around. Want to bring the camera on this side, we'll show you what's going on here. Okay, we're going to find top to the center. First off, we're going to just kind of see where the highest point, point is to kind of figure out where the zero is approximately going to be. We'll put this up. Connect the, put the pointer right on zero. What we're going to do now is going to roll it. You can roll any amount of thousands that you want to, but we always usually go ten thousands each way and make a reading. So we're going right down to ninety. There's ten there. This is reading about eight and a half, which is probably going to be the wrong spot. We go ten there. That's reading about four and a half, so we know we gotta move the pointer up to about six and a half, which would be pretty close. Six, six and a half. We'll try right at six. And then we're gonna go back here on the other side of it. See we're at seven, so six and a half is gonna be about the right number. So move the pointer down about six and a half. There's six and a half there. Okay, 
Yeah, this is a tick more, about six and a quarter looks like it's going to be. Six and a quarter. A little ten. There, that's that's top dead center right there. So we roll it to here, right, right at zero. That is the true top dead center. Now next we're going to do is going to put the camshaft in and uh, come around here. Easiest way to put a cam in, you don't need them to look at a timing mark or anything. These two lobes here what run this center. This is the intake, this exhaust. So you know when that thing's at tap, uh, top dead center, that each lifter is going to have to be open the same amount to be on the right tooth. So we're going to put this in, and we're going to figure out where the, the true top dead center is about. Just to take a couple shots at this and get right. Take the lifters. You got to clearance the block here for these tie bars. These tie bars here has got to clearance the block. So we take an end mill and go slightly deeper than that pocket. See, there's a little step right there. Otherwise, the tie bar might interfere with it. You don't want to go too deep because you'll fall through the bottom of the block and you have to epoxy it shut. So I'll put these lifters in here now. Okay. And we're going to check here. Okay, we got the cam in there. You can see it's on overlap right now. Both valve lifters are open about the same amount, same distance. So we got it on the right tooth. It's going to be degreed pretty close where it's at, but we'll find out here in a little bit. Uh, next thing we're going to do now is we're going to put the, the, the degree tool on. We uh, patented this tool. It's a patent pending on it right now. It uh, holds the camshaft and the crankshaft in positions uh, without the front cover on so you can accurately degree the cam in. As otherwise, if you don't, you know, there'll be there's slop in the cam gear and that will throw your adjustments off. So we'll get that thing put on here and then we'll get back to this here and we'll get the green. Okay, we're ready to put the sign. Don't, don't forget to put your thrust washer on your camshaft. Uh, you just want some in-play in there. The, you know, we, we try to shoot between five and 15 thousandths in-play on the camshaft. You don't want it too tight because as it warms up, it'll, it'll, grab the, it'll grab the case. And we're gonna put this thing on here. This thing's an exact fit, so you, you gotta just wiggle it on. Put your dowel pins in the case, so that rides the dowel pin. That tool's installed now. And now we got that, that cams in there. You got, a little bit of in-play in there. You can use this for checking in-play too, but it's by holding this tight and using the feeler gauge on it. But now we're going to check the uh, camshaft. We're going to roll this thing around the, the other top dead center, the one that's when it's not on the overlap. We're going to go, the, this is the power stroke of the top dead center. Now we're going to move the dial indicator around to the intake valve. You, know, you just put it out the top of the intake valve is what you do, like that. Get it, so it sits there pretty square with the block. And you want a zero to one inch travel Dial indicator. Okay, this camshaft here has got 275 duration. It's a 106 degree lobe center. So to figure out where that intake valve opens on the straight up number, uh, it would be you take the total duration and divide it by two. So it's 275 divided by two. That equals 137 and a half degrees of duration of, of a half the duration. Then you take that number and minus the lobe center. 106 degrees lobe center. So you take 137 and a half minus the 106 degree lobe center. That gives you 31.5, and that is 31.5 degrees before top dead center is when the intake opening is at 50 thousandths lift. This is universal for everybody's camshaft. Don't matter who you buy it from or where you get it from or any engine. It, the math is always the same. And then if, if you want to advance the cam two two degrees, you'd want to open up at 33 and a half. If you want to retard it, you'd want to open up at 29 and a half. Usually when you retard a camshaft, it makes better top end horsepower, hurts the torque a little bit. When you advance the camshaft a little bit, it makes better bottom end torque, but hurts the top end power. So you can play with it and you know which, what, what fits your needs the best. Typically you just put it straight up and you'll, you'll get the best cam for what you want to use it for. But some engines are particular that they like it advanced or like, like to retard a little better to make them run right. So, so now we're going to figure out where this is opening at. So we're going to come around here to the degree wheel. And we'll rotate this thing around. We're going to put this on zero first. We're going to zero the uh, dial indicator. Okay, that's on zero. We're going to, rot we're going to rot turn this around until this opens 50 thousandths. And we know we've got to be at 31 and a half is the number we're looking for. Okay, that shows about 37 degrees. So what we do now is just we're going to rotate this around to 31 and a half. There's 31 and a half right there. Loosen the cam gear up on their side and just rotate the cam around until it's open to 50 thousandths. There's 50 thousandths. We're going to tighten this down. Make sure it didn't move. We're going to recheck it. Go we'll back up a little bit. Go back to 50 here and see where it's going to be at. 
There it is, 31, just under 31 and a half right there. You know, with your and a half degree, it's probably going to be close enough for what you're doing. But you want to get it perfect, you can just, you know, keep working at it. There's 31 and a half, it's right at 50 degrees. So that's perfectly, perfectly degreed in. You want to check your closing. Uh, that's simple math, that closing too, you just take a calculator and figure that out. You got 275 degrees of total duration. And you got, you minus it 180 degrees, that's the rotation from top to center to bottom to center. You minus that number, then you minus the 31 and a half before top to center. 31 and a half minus that, you're at 63.5. So if the camshaft is ground correctly, this should close at 50 thousandths lift. You can check the lift right there too. At uh, 325 lift is what the lift of the cam is. 320 lift is actually what it is. Well, so you rotate this round to, to 50 thousandths open on the closing side. Back that up. It should be about 63 and a half is where it should be at. 63 and a half, you count from the bottom. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. It's at around about 60 right now, but I want to make sure this thing's at zero. See, it's off a little bit. That makes a difference here. Sure, the right spot doing this here. So you're at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. About 60 and a half. So this camshaft is about short, two degrees timing, two degrees duration, what they're advertising for. So if it's short two degrees, you got to split that by one. It should be opening at 30 and a half would be the correct opening on it. And then it should be closing at, uh, well, let's go through the math there. Be, it's short two degrees, so it's 273 divided by 2. So 136 minus 106 equals 30 and a half. So it's uh, 273 minus the 180 from top, top to center to bottom to center minus the 30.5 equals 62 and a half will be once we get this set at 30 and a half here. So uh, we'll go back around here. We're going to get this set at 30 and a half now. Okay, should be right there, there. Yep, third and a half. Then we rotate, rotate back around. See where we're at here on the closing side. So it should be about 62 and a half. I think about 63 there. So it's, it's, it's pretty close. But you, the main thing is you gotta really watch out is the intake opening. To where you want to be and that's that's all you got to do for that and then the exhaust side we move the dial indicator around the exhaust side and that will be basically if the camshaft's ground the same on the same lobe center it will be the same openings and closings but it'll be the reverse of it meaning that it'll be at about 63 it should open at on the other side of it Let's rotate around here This is before bottom dead center. This number will be. This should be there. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. It's at 60. There, we're going to check see when it closes that. Let's see what the total duration on the exhaust side is. Push that a little bit there. This should be around 30 and a half. We'll check here. So that's about 32. So 60 to 32. So you want to check the total duration. That's uh, 32 plus 60 plus 180, 272 duration. So at 272 duration, it's it's uh, 
right at um, it's about the exhaust side is about one degree the exhaust side has one degree less duration than the intake side does so the lobe center is slightly different on that but um, but that that's that's how you do it and uh, typically we do an engine off we look at both usually we go off the intake opening and closing where we like that to be at because that's more important on the than the exhaust side if you got split durations like that you can balance the half that one if 105 is the intake is ground at 106 the exhaust is ground at 105 that'd be 105 and a half would be the the split of the lobe centers you know some people want to degree their camshaft you know what the lobe center of the intake is some people want to split the difference and uh so it's, uh, it's up to the individual engine builder how they want it to run on this engine we'd put it at the 30 and a half and it would run pretty good and and this engine with this camshaft in a good set of ported heads you're probably looking at on a gasoline engine burning uh, gasoline uh, burning engine with uh, inch 200 carbon. You're probably looking around uh, around 70 horse probably for horsepower and properly ported heads and and everything run correctly. About 65 foot pounds of torque or 63. Okay, after you remove the cam degree tool, what you're going to do then is uh, tighten these bolts up. You already have this one. You already have two of them snugged up from the tool when it was in there. You snug these two up. Put the other three bolts in, tighten them up. Tighten these two up. And then what you want to do before you remove before you remove the camshaft, very important, roll it around to roll around to the timing mark on the crank, and put a mark on the gear so you can take it back out. And when you're ready to assemble the motor, you can actually get it back in the right timing again. You know, so very important. Make sure you make mark sure you mark the camshaft before you take it out of the motor. Otherwise, you'll be lost again and do it all over again. So that's the only tips I can give you other right now, other than right now. But it should be a, a good run motor when you get done.